Following on from the previous video, we got to this stage here where where if uh, if we can make this denominator bigger than this one here, then the overall fraction would be this fraction here would be smaller than this fraction here. So now use the same technique for the right hand side. So use the same technique for the right hand side. Bear with me. So use the same technique for the right hand side. So um, so hang on. So so this thing here, if if we can make if we can make the denominator here, if we can make this denominator here. If we can make this denominator here smaller than this denominator here, then this overall fraction here will be bigger than this fraction here. Well, to make it smaller, let's let's look at this. Hang on, square root of n, and then uh, this one here. Concentrate on making this bubble here smaller than this one here. Well, the way we would make it smaller is by here you've got n plus one. So if you if you throw away this this tiny amount here, then then this bubble here will be smaller. Than this bubble here, because here you're adding one, so it must so this thing here is bigger. So so now now we can say that this thing here will uh, will always be bigger or equal to this thing here, because because we we made this um, this bubble here smaller. So the point here is that the point here is that this thing here is always trapped between between this and this. So basically here we. Uh, for for when you, when you look at these two here, this one here we um, we we add one here to to turn this into this, and then when you look over here we uh, we 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 what well, here you would take away one to get you this. So here you would take away one. For for this one here, you you would compare these two here. So you uh, well yeah. So so this thing here will always be trapped in between here and here. So now, uh, now, now, tidy this up. Exactly the same plus exactly the same. So you're going to get two lots of exactly the same. Exactly the same, exactly the same. So you're going to get two lots of exactly the same. So now take the limit uh, of this as n tends to infinity. This here is a constant. This half here is a constant. So we can take it out here. That would then give us that would then give us this half here and then the block here. And then take the limit of this as n tends to infinity. Take the limit of this as n tends to infinity. Um, this is like this half is a constant, so you can take it out. That's why you've got a half here and this thing here. So now, um, now, uh, now, let me think. Uh, so, so, so now, now, uh, now, as as n tends to infinity, this thing here is going to be one, and then uh, and this thing here, as n tends to infinity, um, as n tends to infinity, this. You're gonna, you're adding a tiny amount here, but this tiny amount is going to be negligible as n tends to infinity. Because here you've got this thing heading towards infinity. Here you've got this thing slightly bigger heading towards infinity. But, uh, but uh, as, they're, they're both heading towards infinity. And, but the thing is, as n tends towards infinity, this one's going to be negligible. So you can think of this as being, uh, you can think of this as being root n or you can think of this you can think of this as being root n so this thing here is going to head it's like root n over root n um, this thing here is going to head towards one so uh, half times one is a half so we don't know what this thing is we don't know what the limit is but we do know we do know that it's trapped in between a half and a half so this this means as n tends to infinity this will have no choice but to uh, to have a limit of a half so the limit of this thing here is a half Okay.